Hi, everyone. This is Martin Patella for Life Enthusiast Podcast. And with me today is Monica Leal, a multi-year veteran in health and water technologies. I have met Monica not long ago, but now that I have watched several of her presentations, I'm thoroughly impressed with the depth of her knowledge and the thoroughness of her research and just how well she is versed with what we're going to talk about. And I want to talk to you about the following. As you all know, we have been presenting the uh, water technologies on the inexpensive side, the most uh, affordable solutions. Well, today is going to be different. We're going to be going straight for the best, the quality, the most you can do. Welcome aboard, Monica Leal. Thank you, Martin. And I just want to say I'm really impressed with you also with the variety and uh, absolute huge wonderful selection you have on your website because I found a few things that I'm very impressed with as well so I'm really glad to have discovered your website so thank you for having me sure thing let's uh okay so I want to open up with this we are going to be talking about how hydration and oxidation and hydrogenation are an issue for a human being how the oxygen molecule and the hydrogen molecule are dancing with one another and how they interact with the human physiological experience. And by the end of this presentation, you should be excited to try what we have to talk about. So Monica, yeah, I understand you are concerned about uh, making sure that we disclaim correctly what we're about to say. Yeah. I have to do the obligatory disclaimer, you know, because we live in very, uh, let's just say, rocky, tumultuous times <laughs> as far as the medical system. So I just want to say I'm not a doctor. And if, you know, no nothing I say is intended to treat or diagnose or cure or heal any disease whatsoever. And certainly not the big C, either big C. We got two big C's now. We got the old big C and now we got the new big C, you know. So it doesn't deal with that, and I'm not making any medical claims on that. And if you have any sort of medical condition, please consult your doctor. Got to get that out of the way. Yep. Okay. I have no doctor either. Yeah. There's no medical advice here. Only now, opinions. Yeah, exactly. Everything I'm going to say is, is my own personal opinion. Now, I will share my own personal story and my dog's story. Now, my story... I'm not even going to tell you that right away. I'm going to tell you that a little later, because if I tell you now, you're not going to believe me. And some people might think, eh, eh, testimonials, you know, you hear them all the time with all these various products. They always have testimonials. So I'm not going to start with that, except I will start with my dog. <laughs> I got to show you my dog. Okay. And then what I'd like to do is talk about what I consider another very dire threat that's out there that people are not probably are not aware of. And I'm not talking about the ones we know about that's in the news all over the place. I'm talking about something equally serious. And I'm going to show you some of the research, some of the scientific and medical research regarding that and how this water might play a role in helping to mitigate those risks. All right. Let's have at it. Tell me about your dog. Okay. So this, and we're going to show a picture of my dog, Midnight, and that is Midnight with a K, M-I-D-K-N-I-G-H-T, because he was a little knight, he's a little skipper key, and this picture shows him at age 15, or thereabouts, I actually don't know how old he was, because he was a rescue when I got him, I, I, he was already grown, and based on how long I had him, that put him at, at least 15, and they usually live till about 14, 15. So he was actually the grayest, oldest skipper key anybody had seen at this point in time. And this little dog, had he had such pain, he couldn't walk. He could barely walk. I would have to pick him up and carry him outside in the morning to go potty. And his eyes were milky white. He, he was blind. He was deaf. And he was in such pain, you know, I, I was about to have him put down because I didn't want him to suffer. And... Right around, well, actually, two years prior to that, I had had a lot of serious health issues, and I had bought an alkaline water machine, and some, you know, some brand that's out there, and had it for a couple of years, and never noticed anything one way or the other. Well, I had some dramatic 
experiences later when I switched to the other one that I have now. But at that time, I had this other brand. And during the time I had that machine is when Midnight developed the extreme pain condition and his eyes went milky white, okay, while he was drinking the water from that machine, just for the record. And then that machine broke and I got this other one. And do you know, within two weeks, this dog woke, woke us up at six in the morning, running around, dancing and prancing like a puppy, ready to play. And I opened the back door and he ran outside. I mean, he literally ran outside. I mean, this dog couldn't walk, okay, barely, but he ran. And I was like, what in the world? So that's what happened with Midnight. But now, okay, and, and by the way, he lived four more years. <laughs> six, six months later, he, he was less gray and his eyes turned mostly brown again they weren't so milky white he could run he could play fetch he could see and he lived four more years okay so that's midnight story now right around that time or about a year later i got another dog so i'm going to show you trip okay so the first picture on the left 2011 is right after i got trip same breed skipper key and notice his chin is a little gray Okay, so he was already seven years old and he was starting to get a little bit gray. I started him on the water from, from the beginning and look at the picture on the right, 2018. And notice his chin is maybe a little bit more gray, but not much. He certainly doesn't look anything. He's the same age as Midnight in that other picture I just showed you and you saw how great he was. <laughs> oh, now I understand what you're getting at. So what you're trying to illustrate for me here is that uh, that the dogs don't gray as much when they're drinking good water. He didn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, this dog didn't age. He was already 15 by this time. The same right. age as Midnight, you saw how great he was, okay? And, and he, 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 it's like he didn't age and he was still, solid he he didn't have the bone loss he was still solid okay yeah. and i i'm going to tell you part of my story and then i'm going to show you some of the research okay part of my story is that um my hair is you can see some blonde right it doesn't right. look totally gray okay i'm 61 and oh you mean this is uncolored absolutely oh look at you well i'm clearly not drinking good enough water I've never colored my hair in my life. Okay. Uh, I was about to start coloring my hair about 14, 15 years ago in my late 40s, because, you know, that's what women do, right? Yeah. And I didn't want to because of the chemicals, but I was about to, you know, vanity was winning out and I was about to, because my hair was way, way more gray than it is now. I mean, I do have a few strands. I'm not saying I don't have any, but I was over half gray about to start coloring my hair. And during the time that I was going through, during that two year period when I had that other machine is when my hair turned gray and I was going through menopause and I had not ovulated in about five years. Uh, I know probably too much information for men, but okay. I, I, had, I, I, was, I had no more fertility. I was going through menopause. My hair was over half gray. And then that machine broke and I get this machine. And in three months I had my fertility back perfect cycles like clockwork for the next 10 or 11 years. And in three months time, my friends said, oh, I see you started coloring your hair. And because I have blonde, when I get in the sun, you can see a right. lot of golden. And I, I haven't gotten any more gray since then. And I had a lot more wrinkles, you know, 14 years ago than I do now. All right. Well, so, okay. So stop, stop all of this talk and tell me what are you drinking? Okay. Well, Here's the next slide is bottled water. Okay, what do you notice about this picture? Okay, a bunch, a, a, a bunch of cases of bottled water sitting out in the sun. Well, outside. yeah, you're talking, you're showing me your plastic bottles with horrible right. tap right. water, tap water in it, probably. Well, you know, and it might have had good water at the beginning when they bottled it they might have put good beautiful spring water from xyz mountain spring you know it, it might have been wonderful mm -hmm. but when it's sitting out in the sun for hours and hours and hours and who knows how long it's been in the bottle in the first place can you imagine how much plastic is leaching into that water i mean just think about it i mean on average humans take in about a half a teaspoon of plastic nanoparticles or micro particles on a daily basis 
So we really don't need more plastic in our body from the water. But not only that, think about what happens when you cut open an apple. Okay, everybody knows fruits and vegetables are loaded with antioxidants, right? Yeah. What happens if you cut open an apple and you leave it sitting on the counter for a while? <laughs> Excuse me, it turns brown, right? The big okay. secret, the oxidation. It's the oxidation, right? So everybody knows that happens to apples and fruits and vegetables, but people don't realize that it happens to water as well. So water is also either antioxidant or oxidizing, just like fruits and vegetables. And if you could get water out of a bubbling spring, like what's behind me here, <laughs> if that was real, uh, if you could get water fresh out of the mountain spring at that moment in time, it's like that apple picked fresh from the tree. It's, it's fresh, it's antioxidant, it's wonderful. But within a few hours, that electrical charge pretty much dissipates and it's gone. So as soon as they pipe it into the system or they bottle it, it's pretty much dead. It's like canned peas compared to fresh peas out of the garden. You know, there's just no comparison. So, mm -hmm. so my philosophy is, well, why drink oxidizing water when I can drink antioxidant, antioxidant water, right? So yeah. there's, this is something we can measure. So it's called, there, there's a meter. It's, it's a little device. It's called an oxidation reduction potential meter or ORP meter. And you can actually test your water and see if it's oxidizing or antioxidant. And if it's oxidizing, it's going to have a positive number. If it's antioxidant, it'll have a negative number. And so green tea, for example, is everybody knows that's a really powerful antioxidant, right? So that'll get about a negative 80 or so. But this water fresh out of the machine can be negative three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred. The highest I've ever clocked it out of my machine is over negative 900. So that's way more than 10 times more powerful than green tea. Right. So, yeah, I guess what should be said that the, this is the willingness to uh, be in a oxidative reduction, reductive uh, uh, okay. transaction, which okay. means essentially the willingness to donate an elect electron, which means to extinguish the uh, need. You know, like when, when you showed the uh, apple a moment ago, the okay. oxidation happens when electrons get stolen from the surface of the apple. And the ORP, that's the potential through which the oxidation reduction happens. And that's the willingness to donate these electrons. It's, it's actually a standard chemistry, but it's, it's good to know that um, there is such a thing that you can actually have a life supporting water. Exactly. So really what this technology is doing is just putting it back into the state that it was in when it first came out of that you know, mountain spring, if you could get it at that moment. So it's not, everybody knows, I mean, I hope most of your customers, your listeners are not drinking tap water. I think, I think your, your customers are more uh, savvy than that. They're knowledgeable. Everybody knows not to drink tap water, right? It's loaded with chemicals. So most people have a filtration system where they buy bottled water of some sort. And, and I just got to say, any of that's better than drinking tap water, obviously, you know, you, the first step is you want to make sure the water's clean, filter it somehow. But that's only the first step. It could be very clean. It could have come through a wonderful filtration system and test clean of contaminants and yet be oxidizing <laughs> and actually stealing electrons rather than donating them. Yep. And with this water, it's, it's donating electrons by the trillions. When you drink a glass, it's, it's more of an instantaneous thing where it just, it just floods your whole body. It goes everywhere because water goes everywhere in your, in your body pretty much. So it's not like food antioxidants like blueberries, where they kind of stay in your system looking for, for free radicals. This is more of an electrical antioxidant rather than a food antioxidant. So it's different. So, so the fact that I delayed menopause by almost 11 years and my hair's still the same, you know, re, I reversed the gray and I'm still blonde. Well, what does that say, <laughs> you know? I, I kind of feel like I'm biologically younger than I was before I started drinking it. And, and keep in mind, I was, now I'm not saying it fixed everything. It did not solve all my problems. Okay. And, but it did resolve a lot of issues, which I'll tell you more about later, but I kind of feel it, but keep in mind, I was already, you know, organic plant-based, you know, doing everything right, drinking fresh juices and super, superfoods, you know, the spirulina and all that stuff, all that great stuff. And yet I still had all these issues. So 
So for me, for the water to make that big of a difference was, was pretty profound. Um, mm -hmm. But I'd like to show you a little bit of the research, okay? Yeah, great. Let's let's okay. have it. Okay, so yeah, okay. I'm. It's good to know that whatever you're going to tell is actually backed by solid science, right? Like not, we're just not pulling it off the ethers. Right, because like I said, you you hear testimonials all over the time, all over the place, and people say, "Oh yeah, 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 that's anecdotal, or whatever." Well, there's actually some research to back this up. So this first slide I'm going to show is from Institute of Medicine, College of Medicine, Chung Shan Medical University, Taiwan, this particular one. There's a lot, most of the research is from Japan, actually. And this one is hepatoprotective effect of electrolyzed reduced water, okay, against some kind of liver damage in mice, okay? And that has to do with liver, okay? So there's a lot of animal studies this water, in addition to being antioxidant, it's also alkaline. And what I hear people say all the time is, oh, no, you shouldn't drink alkaline water. It's going to dilute your stomach acid and it's going to make you too alkaline. You know, that's bad. <laughs> and there is some truth to that. If you drink alkaline water from a machine that just makes it alkaline, but it isn't a medical grade machine, okay? Or if you just add baking soda to your water, there's a whole lot of pills and potions and all kinds of ways to make water alkaline. And some of them will actually make your water a little bit antioxidant as well, or they'll energize it a little bit. So there's a lot of things that do part of what this machine does to a degree, all right? But those methods of making your water alkaline don't do much for the structure of the water. And for that reason, there is some truth to that. It, it can dilute the stomach acid and don't drink it with meals because, you know, it'll impair digestion, et cetera. Although the idea that it can make your blood pH too alkaline, that is absolutely a myth. That is absolutely not true. It might, it might affect your urine pH, but not the blood pH because that stays within a very narrow range. However, this next slide is from June, I don't know, it's a Japanese name, so I apologize if I don't pronounce this right, Juntendo Hospital. And this study says, for those suffering with low gastric juice, the presence of antioxidant water, now, presumably this is medical grade antioxidant water from a medical grade machine. Usually when they do medical studies, like in hospitals or any kind, or medical universities, they, they, when they do studies, they're going to use medical grade equipment. You know, they're not going to use some cheap stuff, right? So a medical grade machine producing this water, the presence of antioxidant water will stimulate the stomach cells to, sec to secrete more gastric juice. So if they're low in stomach acid, it'll actually create more stomach acid. However, on the other hand, those with high gastric juice, the antioxidant water neutralizes the excessive gastric juice. According to the medical lecturer from Maba University, the pH of the gastric secretion will still remain normal when antioxidant water is consumed. This proves that the ability of the antioxidant water is able to neutralize as well as stimulate the secretion. So in other words, it'll balance it in either direction. So that kind of puts that whole argument to rest, at least if you get a proper medical grade machine. I think if, it, if you have something less than that, then that may be a concern, okay? I have found my digestion's way better since I've been drinking this water. I, I don't worry about drinking it with meals, although uh, I am plant-based, so that might, you know, you probably still shouldn't drink a whole lot of water with meals, but of any kind of water, but I don't have an issue at all. I've never, I, in fact, it's the opposite. I have, my digestion's way better. So remember I mentioned there's an elephant in the room, right? <laughs> the big C and, and the big V, okay? I, I won't say what they are, but I think everybody knows what they are. I won't get into politics or controversial stuff, okay? Hopefully this will be out on your website for years to come after this big issue is over. But for right now, in 2021, it's on everybody's minds, right? Everybody's freaked out. Everybody's taking sides. Do you or don't you? Should you or shouldn't you, right? And well, I won't let's, let's just be clear, you know, like we're talking about the immune system either working or not working and either being able to uh, eliminate uh, the uh, uh, viral um, 
infections are not. Like when, when we are living in the regular life as we have lived until 19, no, 2019, I suppose, we would we would just say, well, there's the there's the bug going around, and uh, the bug goes around, and some people get sick with it, and some don't. And the whole point of that is that it's a well known theory. It's there's there's an argument. The argument goes, uh, is the terrain more important, or is the invader more important? Right. Of course, the mainstream uh, media would have you think that. When the invasion's coming, everybody's going to fall ill with it. But that's not how it happens. Exactly. Uh, invasion comes and uh, a third of the population falls ill or 10% of the population falls ill. And we call it an epidemic. But that's not really what happens to the other part of the population. How come not everybody's going ill, right? I'm a terrain girl myself. Well, there we go. We're all terrain people. It's just that we have been told a story about the uh, the germ theory has us thinking that it's the germs that do it. Well, they do it, but only to those whose terrain is fertile enough to to take it. Exactly. So the reason I brought that up, you know, what's that got to do with water, right? Okay, well, if it can improve your health, then it's always a good idea. But everybody knows that's a big issue and then the so-called antidote to that or the prevent preventative to that has a whole world of controversy right mm -hmm. and that i am very concerned about because to me it's it's a big experiment it is actually a drug trial <laughs> that is a fact and when you're dealing with the dna what could possibly go wrong right i mean we don't know. We don't know what are the repercussions of that. So I'm not going to go really into that any more than that. But the reason I bring that up is because we're all aware of that threat effect, potentially affecting the DNA for generations to come. But what most people might not be aware of is there's an equally sinister threat out there that's kind of under the radar. And I, I say equally sinister because it too affects the DNA and it affects the body's ability to replicate healthy mitochondria. And it is something that even people like us who are holistic and we probably don't take medications unless, you know, it's a real emergency like an accident or something like that. Generally, we try to not be dependent on medications. That's why we're doing all these alternative things, right? Mm. And yet, <clears throat> there are times when we might be in that situation. For example, somebody has a, a, a car accident. All of a sudden, they, they get whisked away to the hospital and they got to have surgery. They got to have anesthesia. They got to have pain medication. They got to have antibiotics, right? Mm. So it can happen to anybody, even when you live a really clean, holistic lifestyle and normally don't take medications. And what I'm referring to is antibiotics. A per, and I'm going to come back to the water and why that's relevant, but a particular, a particular category or classification of antibiotics called fluoroquinolones. And these are common antibiotics. I mean, your Cipro, Levaquin. Well, yeah. there, are, there are so many stories of people getting, let's, let's talk plain language. This is the famous one that's known as the getting floxed. Exactly. This is the one. Hey, I went to a doctor and I had a perforated eardrum. And uh, I, I, I wasn't sure. So I said, please take a look. They said, yeah, you have a perforated eardrum. And I says, what can we do about it? And the doctor, it was a nursing somebody, says, well, um, nothing much, but we should probably prescribe a bit of an antibiotic for it. And I, I can prescribe this. Uh, I have here, I can hand you a sample of it, of this fluoroquinone. <laughs> I, I said, you want to treat me with that for a perforated ear uh, without me presenting with even an infection? Wow. And the response was, oh, yeah, of course. I mean, there's, there's, oh, the rumors? Oh, forget the rumors. That, those are just rumors. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh. I, I was just astounded because I said, well, no, thanks, number one. And two, how amazing and how easy it is to get handed something that can have a fairly profound effect. Exactly. I mean, I, they have 
stuff yeah. out. I was shocked, truly <laughs> shocked. Anyway, so the stories, anybody who wants to get uh, serious about knowing just how deep this rabbit hole can go, go and look up Floxed. Exactly. And it's relevant to the water. And I'm going to show you why, because some of this has already been floxed. I got floxed and didn't realize it because I thought, oh, well, I don't want to take antibiotics, but oh, I know it's bad, but you just got to take extra probiotics later, right? And, and, and replenish your gut ba uh, bacteria, your, rebuild your microbiome. I thought that that was the extent of it. I didn't realize what else it did until last year. Hmm. And so I'm going to show you. So yeah, they they hand this stuff out. She says, "Oh, it's a myth." Well, if that's the if, if that's the case, then why does it have the FDA's strongest warning, which is the black box label? And this <clears throat> is the FDA warning for fluoroquinolone antibiotics because potentially permanent side effects of tendons, muscles, joints, nerves, central nervous system, and uh, possibly coma, just, I mean, horrible stuff. Aortic dissect, uh, dissect right. aortic aneurysm, dangerous. Hey, listen, we yeah. don't need to, you don't need to scare people any deeper than uh, okay. what we okay. have, you know, like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll share another story. I have a friend, dear friend, who went for a minor operation. It was going to be laparoscopic. He had some kind of a bone growth on his shoulder and it was interfering with the nerve. And so he went in there and they uh, laparoscopically reached in and uh, then they uh, took care of the shoulder problem. And then he got infected. And then he all of a sudden had a flesh eating staphylococcus inside his body. And then they you went. Me? I'm scaring people. <laughs> Martin. <laughs> then, you know, like, you know, it was, it was, uh, it happened, right? And, and so the next thing is, of course, that there's the nuclear warfare. We have to hit it with the hardest we have. So they use the uh, Cipro on him. And uh, uh, then he lost uh, the use of one of his eyes. Oh, that's so, so sad. So he went and so they tried heroically to try and fix it and, and oil injections and trying to save the retina and try to this and that like lots and lots of lots of fiddling with the eye but in the end he still has half his vision he can see the bottom half so it's like as if you watched everything upside down and only the bottom half of it mm, well i'm so sorry anyway so the, the point being he says to the doctor so okay so you saved my life but in the process of saving my life you actually caused me to lose my eye, right? And the doctor says, yes, sir, that is what happened. You, you are alive because we, you didn't die of the flesh-eating bacteria that we inadvertently introduced into your body when fiddling with your small little operation. And now here we are. Yeah. Right? You started on medical, you know, mistakes and all that kind of stuff. Well, so, so the road to hell is paved with the best of intentions. Yeah, and greed. Don't well, anyway, it. talk about how you can avoid this. Never mind how you can okay. get the... Okay. the reason. The reason I brought that up. Okay, so so I think we scared everybody adequately about the fluoroquinolones, and they can find out more online. But fluoroquinolones are actually chemo drugs. You know, it's actually kind of a big deal when people take chemo, you know, it's not a small thing. And yet when they take antibiotics, they don't realize they're taking chemo. And that is actually a fact. And of course, when they created these drugs back in the sixties and seventies, they didn't know about mitochondria back then. So that's why that's their excuse. Okay. But here's, here's why it's relevant. And here's the good news. Okay. Here's the good news. And I stumbled upon this because I got floxed in 2013 when I had an emergency appendectomy and they get, I, I got thoughts. Well, I was in the hospital and the doctor told me I was gonna be in the hospital for 10 days about, because I had a burst appendix, okay? It was pretty bad. And they wanted, and anyway, they gave me antibiotics and they gave me the IVs with the fluids and all that. And I said, no, I'll take the antibiotics, but I don't want the fluids. Well, no, you have to have the fluids. You, you, gotta, be, you, you gotta have fluids because you, know, you don't wanna get dehydrated. 
And I said, I'm not going to get dehydrated. I'm the hydration queen. I'm not going to get dehydrated. And uh, my husband was bringing me the water from home. And I said, I'm just going to drink my own water. And the nurse said, grudgingly, okay, but we got to make sure you, you drink enough. I say, hey, not to worry. I'll drink plenty. So I drank my water instead of the water they gave me. Now, I'm not recommending anybody do that. Okay, but that's what I did. That was my decision. And on day three, the doctor looked at me and he's all puzzled and he's like shaking his head and and like he couldn't figure out. I said, what? What's going on? I thought something was wrong. And he goes, no, no, you're, you're fine. And I said, what am I going to get out of here? And he says, well, you just keep doing what you're doing. And I got out on day four instead of day 10. And not only that, but three weeks later, one of my good friends that was a nurse said, I've never seen anybody recover from, an, from a burst appendix as fast as you did. And was it the water? I, I tend to think it was. And I didn't have the side effects from fluoroquinolones. Now, there could be other factors like genetic, who knows, some people have more, you know, worse side effects than others. So that might be it. I can't really say for sure. All I know is I had no clue that I'd been floxed. And I got out of the hospital in four days instead of 10. And I recovered really quickly from the burst appendix. So fast forward to 2020. And my husband takes Cipro. And he has some side effects, not not as bad as what some people have had, but serious enough to where we were very concerned. And I started, that's why it started looking into all this. And I'm like, well, why did he have such bad side effects? And I didn't. Well, he, he teaches class in the evening. He, he's a Kung Fu master and he teaches class and he wasn't drinking much water in from right three o'clock on. He just wasn't drinking much water because, you know, he was busy teaching class. He didn't want to have to be running in the bathroom. Well, what is the big fuss about right now? What is everybody freaked out about? Everybody's freaked out about protecting our DNA from the big, big, bad jab, right? Now, mm. will protect our DNA from that? I don't know. I have no idea. And I didn't, I didn't say that. I didn't make that claim. But at the very least, it's going to help us with oxidative damage because it says so right here in this study. And at the very least, if somebody's been floxed, I would get, I would get busy drinking this water. People don't believe me when I tell them how powerful this water is. And when I tell them my story, they don't believe me. They're like, what? You got to be kidding me. And I haven't even told you the rest of it, but I will. I'll tell you in just a second. But then they start thinking, well, I'll just add baking soda to my water and it'll do the same thing. Or I'll just get one of these little energizer gadgets. It'll do the same thing. Or I'll just get one of these cheap devices and it'll do the same thing. Or I'll just add these pills and potions and gadgets and it'll do the same thing. So this is the last study, I promise. Electrochemically reduced water, that's electrolyzed reduced water from a machine. It's a little, well, they have hospital units, okay? And then they have these little kitchen countertop ones. So in other words, I have a medical device in my kitchen. This water exerts superior reactive oxygen species scavenging activity in the cells than the equivalent level of just hydrogen dissolved water. See, there's studies saying, oh, it's the hydrogen in the water. It's the hydrogen in the water. Well, yeah, that's one of the properties. The water, the property, the water has several properties. But this study proves right there, slam dunk, that this water is superior in terms of its scavenging ability of reactive oxygen species, okay, or free radicals. It is superior to mere hydrogen water, okay? So that's the slam dunk. There's something else about this water that's different. And it's not just the hydrogen, and it's not just because it's alkaline. There's something else. And I'm going to dance around it because I'm not really supposed to say what it is because it's, you know, it, so, some, some people say, well, I don't know about the science, if that's really true. I don't know, but I'll tell you this. When you take this water out of this machine, you can make tea with it without heating the water. You know how you put a tea bag in a cup of water, I mean, in a cup, and then you pour boiling water, right, to make tea. If you put cold tap water or just cold water, it's not going to make tea. But this water, room temperature, you can make tea bags. You can take a tea bag out, put it in another cup, and you can make 30 cups of tea with one tea bag. And you have nice, rich, dark tea in just 30 seconds or a minute or two, you'll have rich tea. So that demonstrates that there's a quality to this having to do with structure that goes beyond the hydrogen, goes beyond the antioxidant, goes beyond alkaline. Okay, there's something about this water. What it is, I don't know, but I know it works. Okay, so why? And what, what to do and why? Uh, well, you know, we all know we got to filter the water first. That's important. But it, again, it's that state that it's in. And at the time I got my machine, I was desperate. Okay. I, can I tell my story now? <laughs> I, 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 was, I was a mess. Okay. I, I couldn't breathe. I, had, I couldn't get a deep breath. 
I couldn't do that. I couldn't do what I just did. I had heart palpitations and I got, I went to regular doctors. They, they said, oh, your heart's fine. You just have anxiety. No, it wasn't. I went to acupuncturists, nature paths, homeopaths, ac you name it, I did it. Chiropractic. I mean, they all helped me a little bit, but not really. Not, nobody could really figure out what was wrong with me. Um, I sprained my ankle at age 38. And the, when I went to the urgent care and he did the x-ray and the doctor says, oh, you've already got some serious bone loss. And then he goes, oh, you don't need to worry about it until you're in your 40s. And it took me a minute. <laughs> and then I went, hey, wait a minute. Shouldn't I be more worried if I have it early, right? I have bone loss in my 30s. Shouldn't I be more worried? I mean, that just shows the mentality, right? But anyway. And I was told I'd lose all my teeth within a couple of years. <clears throat> I had really bad insomnia. I had acid reflux so bad. I had to sleep sitting up because it was so bad. My ankles were swollen. I had these deep fissures in the heels of my feet that I could stick half my fingernail into. They were so cracked. I had chronic pain. I had ulcers. I had bleeding gums. What else? Oh, I had a sharp pain in one of my ovaries that I don't know what it was, but it was probably something bad and I was trying to deal with it naturally. Anyhow, so this is what was going on. And I realized all my problems had a common denominator and that was mineral deficiency. And I thought that doesn't make any sense. I drink green juices. I take all these green superfoods. I do all these things. How can I be mineral deficient? So I started adding minerals, taking my magnesium and all this stuff. Helped a little, not really. So then I finally figured out it was the water I was drinking. I was drinking distilled water, which is very clean, but it's very acidic and it's very hungry. It, it just like leaches out your minerals. And I'd been told like 15 years prior that it was the cleanest, best water to drink, drink that forever. And I've heard of, you know, cause I was doing like a detox and I can see maybe doing it for a few days to detox, but not more than a few days. I wouldn't now knowing what I know. And, um, and I really can say it, it, it nearly killed me drinking that water. Honest to God, it nearly killed me. So I got rid of the distiller and that's when I got that cheap. I heard about alkaline machines. I said, okay, let's try that. And that's when I had that little cheap and it wasn't really that cheap. It was, it was just one of those that you can get online. Anyway, had that for a couple of years. And that's when I went through the menopause and my dog, you know, I told you that story, but it didn't really, it didn't help any of my problems. And that's when my hair turned gray. I'm not saying it caused it, but neither did it prevent it. And then it broke. And then I got this one. And this, I'm not going to tell the brand and I'll tell you why. So here's what we're going to do. You're not going to tell me what it is. I'm happy about that. We're okay. going to post a link and a phone number. And anybody who's curious enough about this magic, magic, magic is right. going to have to call you. Yes? Yes. Yes. But first, I got to tell you the punchline. I, that machine broke and I got this one because it was a medical grade version of the one I had before. So that made all the difference. And in two days, my acid reflux was gone. Within a week or two, the ulcers were gone, that my feet got all smooth and the heels of my feet to this day are smooth as silk. And I've never had a pedicure in my life. And I've never had a facial in my life. I've never done any of that stuff. Women usually do. And within three months, you know, I already told, told you about my hair, but all those other problems were either 100% gone or 80 or 90% better. Now, did it solve everything? No, I, I didn't. I have a little bit of weight still to lose. Okay. It didn't do that. And I got a little annoyed because I heard a lot of other people that drank the water and they lost weight. Well, I didn't. Okay. Hey, but I'm not complaining because it saved my life. So what can I say? But all those problems were either 100% gone or 80 or 90% better. And all I did was change my water. And it's not like I was a, a soda drinker and I just started drinking water. I already was a water drinker. I already drank a lot of water and I hadn't had a soda in decades. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's, let's just make sure that people understand what they're getting into. So number one, they're gonna have to call you and talk to you about this thing because we are not allowed to tell them exactly or send them online to a link. Two, they're going to learn about how to en enhance their life with eliminating ROS, reactive oxygen species, by extinguishing them with a uh, electron enriched water. And three, they're going to 
probably experienced the rejuvenation effects that that you have experienced because that's how it works. So I guess I better get one myself because I clearly uh, have allowed my hair go to gray, and that's that's not acceptable. Am I saying it's going to fix everything? Every problem every person has? No. Uh, it, it, it didn't fix everything for me, but I can honestly say virtually everybody that I've known that, that really drank this water and drank enough of it and they weren't sneaking sodas or something has had some kind of profound benefits of some sort. It might not have fixed everything, but at least just about every person notices something. You see what I'm saying? It, it's like a missing piece. That. Yeah. That's, that's why you're here on this call. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that. And you know what's really cool too? Check this out. Okay, right now we're all concerned about sanitizing, right? And I know last year, you know, at the height of everything, we were getting our groceries delivered and I was glad I had this machine. You know why? Uh, this shows what, see the water doesn't just make, the machine doesn't just make the drinking water. It also makes a strong acidic disinfectant water. And if you look at this, the, the first column that I have, circled shows the water from this machine and this test was done with this machine strong electrolyzed reduced water ph 2.5 now that's not for drinking okay that's used topically that's a disinfectant it kills all bacteria pathogens everything but the second one that circled ph 2.6 only killed some of the pathogens if you look down the column it only killed some of them so there are other machines on the market that will say they do disinfecting too, but they only kill half the bacteria. So that's not really a disinfectant, is it? If you're having surgery, you don't want to just, oh, just kill half the bacteria, you're good. No, no, that's not going to cut it. So this is really, that's why you want a medical grade machine, because if you're going to use that disinfectant water, you don't, you want to kill all the pathogens, not half of them. And then lastly, it also makes this really cool strong alkaline water that is like a degreaser. It's an emulsifier and you can soak your fruits and vegetables and it will literally pull off the gunk. You know, I mean, I try to buy organic as much as possible, but even with organic, sometimes there's gunk, but the pesticides are oily. They're oil-based because they don't want them washing off in the rain. So this will actually pull that stuff off. And it's a great spot remover. I do, our, we do our laundry with it, so I don't buy laundry detergent. So it, it's, it's got a lot of other uses as well. So it can save on cleaning supplies and, you know, just help have a more organic household, you know, that's pretty cool. So here's the website that I put together now. Is that the website where you can be found? Correct. Um, right. It doesn't have my name on it. Okay, I did it kind of anonymously. But it has a form at the bottom that you can fill out your name and, and, and uh, email address and phone number. It only goes to me. I promise you're not going to get spammed. I'm not going to give it to anybody else. But I'll give you a call and see if you have questions or if you, you know, I can email you some more information. But that particular site does have some of the studies. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm, I work as a medical rep for several years. So I tend to be a little bit, I'm very holistic, but so if something doesn't have studies, that doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't work. But if it does have studies, I kind of pay attention to it. So I wanted to address something because I hadn't seen anybody else connect the dots with the fluoroquinolones and this water. So that's why I made the website. But don't let that deter you. Just read the highlighted yellow parts. You don't have to read the whole thing. Just the highlighted yellow parts and you'll get the idea. And then it's got the thing at the bottom where you can put in your information and I can contact you. Okay, good people. So you heard it here. There, there's such a thing as living water. It was, it was written about in stories where you were supposed to be able to wake people up from dead. Well, this is not quite like that, but damn close. You, you, I, got, I got to interject real quick. You know, there's those springs, you know, those sacred springs, you know, all over the world where people line up, you know, and they're supposed to leave. And they have the same properties as this water, except now they've installed these faucets so you go to the spring and, and it's all piped so i think they've killed it this is martin patella for life enthusiast if you have questions call me at 866-543-3388 as always we are restoring vitality to you and to the planet thank you monica thank you for having me martin i appreciate it